use the opportunity to reflect on the beauty and the power, the majesty of this black skin. It's a wonderful thing. Um, and it's, you know, a blessing to be here in Paris and to share this work. So, yeah. <laughs> Alors, vous étiez où Je vous attend là C'est le vernissage aujourd'hui de Off Crown and Kings de Fahamou Pekou. Je lui ai posé quelques questions sur son travail et aussi aux fondatrices de la galerie. Je vous laisse découvrir cette fabuleuse exposition qui se termine le 26 octobre. J'espère que vous aurez le temps d'y faire un tour. Et euh, on y va Vous me suivez These niggas holler money hoes, clothes, that's all a nigga knows. It's all the image shows, and most these niggas pose. It's a style, I suppose. They're doing as they're told, and then hope the little black boy grows. 18 years young and full of drama, thinking the shiny things in life bring a man true honor. But all his life, he's been taught to pay for chase, hustle drugs to make a way. Keep a gun on your waist, now his life seems a waste. He's full of talent with no outlets to display. With poor examples, major hurdles in his way. By any means, now appears the only way. Just go one day to day. So, my first question is um, your new series of work is focused on hairstyles of African men. So, how did you start these researches about black African identity? Well, the research in the work, the study, the interest in um, African culture and African heritage is something that goes all the way back to my childhood. You know, when I was maybe seven years old, my father told me, you know, that my name You know, he asked me if I knew what my name meant, and I never thought that my name had a meaning. Uh, and when he told me that it was a Swahili word that meant understanding, you know, it, it piqued my interest and made me want to know more about Africa. And so ever since I was a child, I've always done a lot of research and, and study in African culture. Um, and as you know, my, my work as a professional artist has been around representations of black identity, uh, particularly black men. Uh, and recently I was, um, you know, reading a newspaper and, you know, there was a story about new laws being passed that prevented people from discriminating against black people because of their hair. And I just found that to be really interesting that in 2019, you know, black people still have to negotiate how we can wear our hair. Um, so part of the Uh, idea for me was to also think about the ways that uh, spaces where black men can go and feel safe and feel free, feel comfort, um, feel uh, respected. And, you know, I, I started thinking about where those places are. And one of those places is the barbershop. Uh, and I really, you know, wanted to do more uh, understanding of the barbershop and not just the barbershop, but also the styles of, of hair that, that, that men have. And one of the first things that I uncovered was the Amasuzu uh, style from Rwanda, uh, which is a traditional style that uh, is worn by men and women, um, but the styles symbolize social status, um, uh, marriageability, um, and lots of other things. And so it was more than hairstyles, but you know, it was commentary, it's um, a message, it's symbolism. Um, and I just found that to be really powerful uh, in thinking about contemporary ways that men wear their hair now, you know, um, how it connects to that history, to those roots, and I just wanted to explore that idea more. This is why it's hot on the block, air condition, and a multi-generational product of our condition, and you won't get far in this life without discipline. Sometimes you gotta break the tradition, man. This is why it's hot on the block. So the installation is called Watch the Throne. Um, and, you know, as I think more and more about uh, African men in, in, in our hair, I began to reimagine the barber chair as a kind of a throne. Um, it's a place where you go and you sit in that chair and you're now being treated like a king. Like, you know, you might come in, you might feel bad about yourself, but when the barber is done, he cuts your hair and it looks nice and you look at yourself in the mirror, it's like, you know, it's a sense of pride, you know. Um, And I wanted to convey that um, by taking vintage barber chairs and reimagining them as thrones. So I find a, the chair, I take it all apart, I add gold leaf and I redo all of the pads and pillows with African fabrics. 
um, and other elements to just really make it feel like a regal place so that when you sit down in that chair, like you feel like a king. So you made a collaboration with Jadena. Can you uh, explain us how did you uh, collaborate with, uh, with them? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, uh, you know, even though I'm mostly known for my painting, you know, I always just say that I'm an artist. You know, it doesn't matter what the medium is. I, I, I'd like to experiment and, and, and try different things. And I've always, you know, at the same time that I uh, was a little boy and I drew all the time, I also rapped, you know, like it was just a way that I expressed myself. Um, but I never thought of myself as a rapper. I, I mean, I can rap, but I'm not a rapper, you know? Uh, and so it was really fun for me to, you know, collaborate with rap artists um, before I, I began doing my painting and my art full time. I worked as a graphic designer and so I would design a lot of album covers for rappers and, you know, marketing material. Um, and so, you know, it's just kind of a part of my own experience in the arts is, you know, having this relationship with like hip hop music. Uh, and, you know, I, I live in Atlanta. Um, I know a lot of the people who are in uh, Janelle Monae's uh, crew of Wonderland. Uh, and so when they reached out to me and asked me about working with Jadena on his album cover, of course, I said yes. Uh, I really love the concept of the album. Um, it's an exploration of the diaspora. Um, you know, it's about Atlanta being a direct link, a bridge almost, onto the African continent. Um, and that really resonates with my soul and resonates with my work. And so, you know, to be able to participate and collaborate with him on that was a great experience. Alors j'espère que la vidéo vous a plu et que vous aurez envie de découvrir davantage le travail de Femme Pécou. N'oubliez pas de vous abonner à ma chaîne et de mettre un petit pouce bleu. Vous pouvez me suivre sur Insta, donc à Virginie et Ognan, et découvrir plus de contenu, donc plus d'articles sur africanlinks.net. A bientôt pour une nouvelle vidéo.